It's time for the final vibe tier list for spring 2024 anime. This is again, usually I just do a weekly episode, you know, tier list of my personal preference of how much I enjoyed that episode. But today it's the final, final season's tier list. Let's start with Windbreaker actually. Windbreaker. What did you guys think about Windbreaker? I would be comfortable putting Windbreaker in the great tier. I don't think that Windbreaker is doing anything crazy. But I think that it should be somewhere around here. Like, I don't think that it's come. Oh, sorry. I, sh I should change this. This, this is going to be peak, right? Peak. Sorry. Got to change the trailer list. That goes peak, great, good, mid, dookie. I think that great is a pretty good place to place uh, Windbreaker. Like, the, the overall fights were amazing. The stories behind the fights were also amazing. That's what made the delinquent anime so good. I definitely enjoyed this a lot. I'm surprised at how many people actually, you know, watched this. I thought it would fail on my channel just like, uh, what was the other one? It was, uh, the one with Takemichi in it. We tried like an episode at a long, 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 long time ago, but it failed completely. So yeah, not, not viral. Like Tokyo Revengers. We tried Tokyo Revengers in the channel a long, long time ago, but it did really bad. But hey, Windbreaker did okay. I think I'd be perfectly fine putting this in the great tier. Newgate? I feel like Newgate should be in the Dookie tier. I feel like Newgate should straight up be in the Dookie tier. Not even mid. Not even mid. Like, I did say that it's just been, like, consistently mid. But, like, fin the finale episode, it was literally falling off. Like, the episode was actually falling off. The scenes, like, I made fun of the episode, right? Characters' faces weren't even, like, aligned with the rest of their eyes and nose and mouth. Like, shit was actually falling apart. I think that, like, there was a Shin versus Gerard, you know, Shin versus Gerard. I, I thought it was, like, peak or great, right? But other than that, every other episode, like, sure, you might have one good episode. But, like, other 11 episodes were just, like, mid at best. I don't know. I'm gonna put this in the dookie tier. I'm gonna put this shit in the fucking dookie tier, bro. Now, I don't know if the, you know, source material is good. I bet it's good. That's why y'all kept, you know, watching the Newgate reactions, even though I thought that it was such a shit anime. I don't think that the story was anything special. I think that, like, the fight scenes are just garbage animated. It rushed too much. The girl designs are great, but it's like, you know, you need more than that. The sound, the soundtracks are pretty good. The soundtracks are pretty good. The studio fucked it up. Well, that's every anime. I'm putting this shit in du Dookie tier. I don't know what, you know, how good the source material is, but if you think that your favorite source material got adapted well in the anime, like, you know, you're delusional. Come on, don't cope now. Mission Yozakura, part one. I feel like mid or good. Mid or good. Mm, I think that there's never been like an animation problem. There is like no problem with this anime. The only problem is the quote-unquote pacing, which is, you know, it's a Shonen Jump series and they're kind of taking its time to build up, you know, the foundation. So I, I, I can respect that. Um, but doesn't mean that I'm going to put it in peak. I have been enjoying the Slice of Life episodes. There are funny moments here and there. And it can get really hyped too if you look at Kurogo. I don't think Mission Yosakura should be in mid. I think that I'd be perfectly fine putting this in good. I want to put this in good for now. Data live. Hmm. Greater peak. Greater peak. Was it actually peak? Was it actually peak? Let's think about every episode. There were some crazy ass moments. Mew coming out and just killing girls immediately. Kurumi getting donutted. Psych! Kurumi psyched, you know, clutches. And then we go on a date with Rene and Mio. West Coast stuff. Yeah? Yeah? Uh, peak? Great? I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. Again, like, these ratings are subject to change. It's like, it's not just my final rating. I'm gonna put it in... I'm gonna put it in great for now. I feel like it should be peak. It should be somewhere in between. I'm gonna put it in great for now. Every episode are pretty good. The animation quality... I mean, the story was insane, right? It's like we're getting the revelation of everything. And there were really hype moments. Extremely hype moments back and back, back over, over and over and over again. I feel like the animation obviously could be better. You know, there's some limitations with, you know, Studio Geek Studios and fucking, you know, the animation quality. Story was good, yeah. Story was great. Animation was mid. So can you call that peak though, right? Can you call it peak 
even if you have a mid animation but story was great i'm gonna put it in great tier for now for now elf bride i would put elf bride in great tier elf bride there was no pacing issues it stuck to what it was doing well with the slice of life cunning moments the awkward you know uh romance between nephi and zagan and then the family slowly, you know, begin to expand as we get like, you know, Valifor, you know, Uncle Barb, fucking Chastile, Grandpa Raphael. I would comfortably put this in peak right here. Yeah, I would. It was a great anime to watch. We do need a season two of this. Kono Suba. Peak or great? I really want to reserve the peak, you know? I can't have everything being peak. But... Damn, it Ponso was pretty fucking fast paced. Like immediately we went in with like a little bit of setup with you know the goddess toys, you know, the hammer of coins and stuff like that. And then we went into, you know, Princess Iris Arc. Princess Iris Arc was pretty fun. And then we came home and then there was like, you know, collecting the different weapons arc. Darkness is in trouble. The finale, if only Mohawk, man. If only Mohawk Man could have fucking said something. Like, why doesn't Mohawk Man do anything this time, bro? I swear to God, they changed it up. Usually Mohawk Man had like a really cool line to say here and there. This time he only made a cameo appearance in the background scenes and didn't say anything. Mass Cosma. Prime Cosma was peak. Prime Cosma was definitely peak. You know, Chris was gotten in the action as well. Vanier just pulling out the crazy script at the end of the day. I think that we can put Konosuba... Again, this tier list is not like what an objectively good anime is, but like what I personally enjoyed a lot. Konosuba never failed to make me laugh. I think that Konosuba Season 3 should be put placed in peak relative for now. There was no problem with the animation. There was no problem with the pacing. Every episode was full of fun and laughs. Yeah, I think I've been putting in peak. Misfit Thinking Academy, uh... It's not even over yet. It's not even over yet, but like the content so far... The animation is completely trash. Like, they are incredibly fucking up the animation quality. I also have some funny lines, you know, the slice of life moments, the funny shit with Shin, you know? Trying to be like, hey, Rei and Misa, you know, are you worthy of my blessing? And, you know, Father Shin being really protective and stuff like that is very funny. But like, if we consider the overall season, it is enjoyable, but mid, I agree. The love sword touching tip exactly, but if you look at the production value, if you look at like the scheduling, the, you know, the inconsistencies, I think that Yozakura does a better job. I probably enjoy Misfit more than Yozakura. I probably do. But like, I definitely see the fault, you know, I definitely see the fucking fault. The power of love is, those, those things are fun as fuck. Maybe it should be just placed in good for now. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like it should be in between here. Kind of feels mean to be placed in mid. But the scheduling is not helping. The fucking animation quality is not helping. Even the flashback scenes, they're just like 2x rewinding, you know? It's, it's actually really funny how whenever they do like, you know, referring to different scenes, they're just playing the entire clip at 2x speed. That, that shit was actually unironically funny. But it's a bad thing to do. Uh, mid or good? Mid or good? I am gonna put it in mid for now. Again, we're gonna do a little bit of restructuring by the end of the video, but I'm gonna put it in mid for now. Slime. Oh, this is gonna be a controversial one. Slime. Where do you think slime is gonna end? We're talking about just part one. And if we think about all the good shit, like Hinata, you know, Luminous... Diablo, those scenes are like 10 out of 10s. But what about the 80% of the other episodes of just meetings? Is it bad just because it has meetings? Is it simply a limitation of the anime where meeting episodes cannot be as enjoyable? Are we monkeys for not being able to enjoy meetings as much as we enjoy the fight scenes? Listen, I think that it's impossible and unfair to compare you know, a super hype pop-off episode like the Diablo pop-off or Hinata and, you know, versus Rimuru or Luminous pop-off compared to the table sitting and just talking episodes, right? 
but it's up to the studio themselves to understand how they're going to package all the fucking exposition and deliver it in a way where the audience can, you know, enjoy it in bite-sized pieces instead of just being bored of the same shit over and over again. You've heard us so much complaint. People have been even dropping this show because of the meeting episodes. And some of the meeting episodes definitely were boring, but a lot of them were engaging. Anytime you're at the church, anytime you're at the Roto family, Eastern Merchant showing up, you know, fucking Laplace and, you know, Yuki and stuff. That was very engaging. I can't put this in peak, though. And I'm not sure if I can put it in great. I'm not sure. I, I, I think that, like, it's somewhere here between great and good, you know? Like, I enjoy Tensor more than Yozakura, but, like, it's hard to, like, fucking give it a really high rating when you have all these other episodes, which just feels like a fucking 5 out of 10, you know? It just feels like a 5 out of 10. Again, we're not selectively picking just the best moments. If we're picking the best moments, then every one of these animes can be in the peak tier. But we're considering the entire season part 1 as a whole. And I just don't think that it's fair to put... Tensura with these other three where these other three were very impactful every episode I'm gonna put this here for now I'm gonna put it there for now the top of good tier the top of good tier and for the final tier list I think that it is fair to kind of put this in an order where it's just like you know like this so data live I'm gonna put this here windbreaker then elf bride yeah like that I'm gonna put it in good for now I'll, I'll see if I change my mind later on appraisal isekai was surprisingly good. Appraisal Isekai was surprisingly good. There was no insane moments. But it was an anime where I thought it was going to be another shitty Isekai. And I thought it was going to be. But then it started to do a little bit things different. Where the main character isn't the focus. And it's him appraising everyone else and gathering leadership. And then them handling things. Each episode felt meaningful. There was a lot of depth to each character's backgrounds, and they fleshed out the entire world building to the point where I feel like it's not a cheap story. I would be confident putting this in the good tier, maybe the bottom of great tier. Maybe I put it like this. I thought that Appraisal Isekai was fantastic. Now, I don't think that it had insane moments, right? I don't think it had, like, crazy like pop off moments but like consistently it was pretty good so i'm gonna put it in good tier for now re monster i think re monster was absolute shit now you know gobji thrusting right gobji thrusting is fun right whenever gobji thrusting or fucking you know our main character ogro doing some sussy ass shit right it's, it's funny right there's some controversial moments where it's funny but the entire season as a whole, it's peak dookie. <laughs> a dryad, yeah, for sure. But like, you thought it was a good world building? Oh, no, no, you're talking about a praise of My bad, my bad. Because like, the fucking, this show just blitzkrieg, right? Because like, I can't appreciate anything because it's just going at light speed, like pace. And when they're explaining all the different evolution forms and whatever all these different things mean. The fight scenes also were pretty ass. Like, I didn't watch this anime for the fight scenes. I only watched this just to see, oh shit, it's a goblin. Is he gonna start, you know, kidnapping humans and doing some other shit to it? And yeah, there was some entertainment to be had from it, but the overall season, pretty bad, man. Pretty bad, man. <laughs> but um, I will, I will salute Gobji and also potentially the best uh, opening of uh, anime uh, summer, sorry, spring 2024. I think Remonster should be ahead of Newgate, though. Newgate was just... Fuck, it was... <laughs> Remonster, I'll put it ahead of Newgate in the Dookie tier. I'll put it in the peak of the fucking Dookie tier. Level 2 cheat, easy. Yeah, go to the peak. Yeah, go to the peak. I don't even care. I don't even care. Level 2 cheat came out of fucking nowhere. Level 2 cheat was an anime that I had no expectations for, yet it blew me out of the water. Episode 1, I was like, this is a 5 out of 10. Episode 2, oh, this is a 10 out of 10. And every episode after that, oh my god, they stuck to what they're good at. Slice of life, cunny moments, you know, expanding a roster of characters, the fake hero and the fake gold digger getting into trouble as usual, Fenris being jealous of other girls and making sure no one's touching Danna-sama. It was a great anime, man. Bali Rosa and Mao-sama. Fucking Dalmani, Dal Daraminas or whatever, and fucking Hia. Like, 
This anime delivered on the hype moment. It also delivered on the rom-com moments. It also delivered on the slice of life moments. It just was so good. It completely caught me off guard. I sincerely wish that there was a season two for it. I would be content putting this in peak. It's kind of crazy, right? It's like animation quality. It's just like everything about it was so good. I genuinely enjoyed this. And a lot of people think that this anime is garbage. I bet you didn't even give it a good try. I bet you didn't even finish the show. It was genuinely good. I, su I highly suggest. If you just want like a comfortable chilling show. Just to like wind down and have non-stop fun. Level 2 is it man. Skimichi. Moonlit Fantasy. Where should it be placed? Peak or Great. Peak or great? I'm gonna put it in top of great for now. Because, like, we're thinking about part two right now. Uh, should we be thinking about just part two or both parts? It's, it's kind of weird, right? Because, like, we just started doing this tier list and, you know, I'm not really sure what we're really, you know, judging. But maybe we should just do core two right now. So if we're judging just core two, there was still a lot of buildup. But, you know, after the buildup was done, they really did deliver on all the hype important shit, episode after episode after. I low-key want to have it in fucking peak, bro. I, I low-key want to have it in fucking peak, bro. Core 2, like... And again, like... Tensura scenes, right? The Tensura scenes, the Skimichi scenes, right? I think that Tensura and Skimichi like pop-up moments, they are absolutely peak. But Tensura has more like, quote-unquote, you know... L episodes where Skimichi was pretty consistent. I thought that Skimichi should be. Ah. I really did fucking enjoy every episode as soon as it started to pop up and as soon as we got into, you know, tournament arc. This is only part two we're considering. It's not fair. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, man. It was crazy. I'm gonna put it. In, I'm, I'm gonna put it at the bottom of peak tier right now. M maybe ahead of level two. Maybe. Did I enjoy more than Konosuba? I don't know. The all the pop off episodes are crazy. They were actually insane. And then the other setup episodes weren't even that bad. They weren't. They were like pop up episodes disguised as setup episodes, right? That was exactly what that was. Bottom of peak. Fuck! I don't know! I don't- I- Ah! Oh. Skimichi was genuinely bullying Sophia, shitting on, you know, Trash Moki. Oh, man. Konosuba- oh, Fuck, it recently fires. Fuck. Sophia having a lot of power was so funny too, man. Oh. Hot take. Hot take. Hot take. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. They're gonna be mad. Oh, they're gonna be fucking... The Tensura fucking light novel neckbeards are gonna be so mad at this, bro. They, they, they are, they are gonna be so mad at this, man. Oh. <laughs> I, I gotta do this. I, I, I gotta put Tensura at the bottom of great list, right? I, I gotta bump it up. Right? Now that I really look at it, like, did I really enjoy Tensor in the same level of praise on Yosakura? I feel like we gotta put it up. I feel like Tensor has gotta go up. It's gotta go up. I think that's fair. But, like, does Skimichi... Fuck. Fuck. Oh, oh. Yeah. I'll put it, I'll, I'll leave it like that for now. I'll leave it like that for now. I, I, I'm, I'm, pro it's, it's subject to change throughout the video. I'll put it under for now. All right, Mushoku Tensei peak. Peak of Duke tier. Peak of Duke tier. Pedo Tensei. Yeah, degenerate ass Hisekai. <laughs> nah, Mushoku Tensei's gotta go all the way to the bottom, all the way to the top, bro. Um, Mushoku Tensei. Like that? Mushoku Tensei. Is amazing. The themes that it delves on, a lot of people are obviously, you know, people hate Rudy. People just hate this show. We're judging just core two right now, by the way. 
not core one. We're only thinking core two of season two. And if we think about core two season two, as soon as we got in there, you know, we did the whole Norn shit, then turning point three, then the rest is history. Yeah, it should be honestly like number one, I think. It's a beautiful anime. It is an amazing anime. Like, a lot of, I'm sure a lot of people get mad at this show because, you know, they think that it's just unacceptable what Rudy does. But if you, like, Rudy has some great character developments this season, man. A lot of people, like, shit on Rudy, but, like, Rudy has really developed. Obviously, he's going to go back to his degenerate tendencies, but there was many moments. Like, there was the whole Nanahoshi moment. There was, you know, Norn. There was also Paul. There's Zenith. And, like, there's moments where every time, basically, he just thinks to his past life, and then he's able to, you know, overcome this past traumas and move forward, right? The whole thing about, you know, Paul dying was, oh, shit. You know, what about my parents back on Earth? There's some unresolved trauma there, blah, blah, blah. So if you think about it from that perspective, he had an amazing, you know, development. And just the nature of the animation, the pacing, the storytelling, bro. The dual wielding the wives. Eris being, you know, fucking hinted at later on. I, it's, it's comfortably peak. It's comfortably peak. Now, I still think Rudy's an absolute piece of shit character. Honestly, I don't really like Rudy. <laughs> Straight up, like... I, I don't really like Rudy. Like, I think that he's an absolute piece of shit that keeps getting away with things. And, okay, I'm supposed to feel bad because, you know, he's a fucking neat back in life and trauma. Sure, whatever. But, like, yeah, I, I can acknowledge that Rudy is a piece of shit. I can acknowledge that the story is great and that there's a lot of development, but still be like, yeah, Rudy's still a piece of shit. I, I put it in peak. I put it in peak. All right, next. Seventh print, all the way to the top, all the way to the top. Nope, nope, this is a number one anime for me. Yep, BBL Shota is a number one anime this season for me. Genuinely, every episode was cracked. Genuinely. There was not one single wasted episode. Every episode was balls to the fucking wall. The animation quality was so fucking crisp the entire time. The voice acting, the like everything about it, production value-wise, was beautiful. Now... Elephant in the room is, you know, it's a... <laughs> Apparently the author uh, wanted to basically have the main character as a girl, a lolly, but then he couldn't have topless scenes. And that's why he decided to go with the Shota. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how true this is, but this is what I read online. Uh, <laughs> if you can look past the Shotokan, you know, fan service, this anime, I think, is actually amazing. It is incredibly hype. It's incredibly fun to watch. The plot... It, it, it's not really like a big brain plot. It's it's not. It's just a kid that's been re not reincarnated. He well, it is a reincarnation, right? Because in the past he died, then he went in the same world. It's a reincarnation anime, not an isekai, right? And then he gets kind of like later into the time in the future, he gets born as a prince, and then basically it's just his obsession with magic and pursuit of it, and then just kind of flexing on demons here and there, right? It, the plot isn't deep. It doesn't need to be because. Everything that it does is just so stupid hype and fun. Enjoyment wise, this is amazing anime to watch. I definitely recommend it. Now, Blue Archive. I put it the good tier. I, I would put Blue Archive in the good tier. I don't think it's mid. I don't think that the animation quality suffered. I don't think the storytelling was bad either. I think I think the story was pretty good. I put like Blue Archive right here. Right sandwich between Appraisal Isekai and you know, Mission Yosakura. Was there crazy hype scenes always? No. There were some really fun scenes though, right? There's a lot of funny, cunning moments. Uh, there's, uh, you know, Ado showing up to save... Problem Solver 60 is showing up to, you know, save Abidos multiple times is sick. The finale, everyone showing up to save was sick. But, like, is it that good of an anime? I think that... People also say that this season's worth of content, right? Blue Arca specifically, the early game arc is one of the weakest story. So I guess there are some limitations of what it could work with, but for what it had, it kept me interested enough. I thought the overall plot was mysterious, right? The whole desertification. I love the whole corporate structure of this place where, you know, Big Kaiser just keeps rising the interest rates. Why do the girls just all fight with guns and shit? No one gets hurt, you know? There are some funny moments. I don't think that it's the best anime I've seen, but it was definitely a good anime that I'm, you know, happy to have seen, right? I put it in good tier for sure. Kaiju wait all the way up! All the way up, all the way up, all the way up, yep, there we, all the way up, yep, above, 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 and now, 
Let's uh let's do some restructuring. Hold up. Let's let's do some restructuring. I think there's too many enemies in the peak tier now. Let's see if we should restructure here. So let's think about it. Let's think about it. Let's think about it. I think that Skimichi should come down here. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think Skimichi should come down here. I think I'm fine with this list of anime. Kaiju 8. BBL Shota, Mushoku Tensei, Konosuba, level 2. These are all shows that I adore this season and didn't find much fault at all. Down here, great tier. Yeah, I, I'm fine with that. Kaiju 8? Kaiju 8? Dude, like, straight up was perfect. Was there any episode that was weak? The only weak episode probably is in the middle where they're just finished, you know, training arc and they're, you know, first mission, no, training arc. And then they're having like a party. But even then, that was like a, such a small part. And then immediately we got raided. Right? There was like no downtime. It was just like go, 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 go. Hype, hype, hype. Soundtrack, amazing. Animation, amazing. The build up. Every episode, just, just super hype. Just fight, fight, fight. Survive, survive, survive. Just nonstop fun. I put it in peak. Now, I hear that the early game in Kaiju 8, the author made it incredibly fast-paced to keep the audience engaged. But then after season one, I hear everything goes down. I hear that after season one content, the manga changes to bi-weekly release and it's just stall. Every chapter is now just like couple a couple panels of like action scenes and just monologue scenes. So everything that we love about Kaiju 8 apparently will not happen in season two. I don't know. This is, I'm just reading random comments on the subreddits and stuff like that because people were saying like, wow, Kaiju 8 season one, it was so fast paced. It was just nonstop fun. And people are like, well, glad you guys enjoyed because, you know, moving forward season two, it's not going to be like that. I don't know. Who knows, right? Who really knows? Maybe manga release, it's like that. But for, you know, anime, you know, they got more to, you know, more quests. So who knows how, what that'll happen. But I would confidently put Kaiju 8 in number one right now. And I think that Kaiju 8 is number one. With 7th Prince being numbers 2, Mushoku Tensei 3, Konosuba, yeah, I think this is a good list right now for me. Finally, we have Kimetsu no Yaiba. If we judge Kimetsu no Yaiba just the last episode, if we just judge the finale, if the finale is the only thing it had, like, oh my god! Oh! Oh! Kimetsu Jimuza! Oh my god, bro, this... Zenitsu being locked in. Yo, I got ah, I got it, I got it. Yo, Zenitsu being locked in. Oh my god, the fucking and the Hashiras unite, bro. Hopefully it's like, did it do did it do anything, bro? It's okay, the Zenitsu locked in. Zenitsu locked in, baby. Yeah! <laughs> it's so fucking good. Zenitsu locked in, dude! Locked in! I love it. I love it. I love. It. Oh, you can't. You can't even see me right now. Here, this is right there. Anyway, same years. I'm just doing a little TikTok. Then it's to being locked. in was so fucking. Good. I don't know. It's just one scene. Anyways, um, but we can't. You know, judge. We 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 can't just judge. You know, <laughs> one episode. We gotta judge the entire season. So I'm just playing defense for Demon Slayer right now, right? If we just judge the last episode, it's number one. But, but. <laughs> It's probably gonna be down here, right? Like, uh... Eh? 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 Bottom of great tier? Cause like... Every epi- Like, like... Some of the training episodes are so bad, dude! The paper airplane! It's so bad, dude! <laughs> oh, fuck. I don't know where to put it. The, the top of good? The bottom of great, like, you know, the last episode, I feel like it bumps it up. Ah, four episodes are bad. Okay, but what does that mean? There's eight episode season. If half the fucking season is bad, it's hard to, you know, justify putting this shit up in the, you know, high up, right? Where should Demon Slayer be placed? Ah, uh, oh man. Yeah. I think bottom of great. I, 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 maybe bottom of great. All right, let's do one final re revision. Okay, let's, let's look at this, right? Let's look at the final list right here. In peak, we have Kaiju 8 number one. I am comfortable putting Kaiju 8 number one. 
Seven Shota, Mushoku Tensei, Konosuba level two. I love these animes. They really stood out and there was little to no problems with any of the episodes. The Great Tier, Skimichi, Date Alive, Windbreaker, Elf Bride. Yeah, these four I think were pretty damn solid. Then the other two, Slime and you know, Demon Slayer here kind of suffers because of some of the pacing issues with the episodes, right? It's just a little bit of a snooze fest, but it is what it is. It's a limitation of what they had to work with. It's a fucking training arc. And the other one is just a bunch of meetings. And again, slime neckbeards. Just be like, like, I have no issues absorbing the yapping content. If you look at any reaction and if you actually watch my videos, there is no way that you can say that I don't appreciate the story. I try to fucking understand the entire thing, even the yapping episodes. And while I can absorb all that, I can also at the same time acknowledge that those episodes are not fun compared to the really hype episodes. And if you can't understand that, there is a disconnect in your head where you feel the need to shit on people for thinking, oh my god, an episode talking about a fucking, uh, 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 like laying down fucking brick by brick should be somehow contested and peaked here just because you love the series. I love slime, but let's get serious. I think it's fair down here. Kimetsu no Yaiba, same thing. There's some incredibly hype moments, but, but there is a lot of episodes where we're just stalling, doing nothing, throwing 10 goddamn airplanes, right? If it just had the hype shit, it would easily be in the peak tier. Again, episode finale, so good. But every episode wasn't like that. Appraisal, Blue Archive, Yozakura. I think all three are animes where there is little to no issues, but I also don't remember really hype moments. It's just kind of just existing and having fun in here and there. I didn't feel that it could really it's on the same level as the tier above i think that these three are perfectly fine being down here I, this is just not even complete like this is not even complete it's not even fair to put it down here but like fuck i feel like the adaptation i hardly know what the fuck is going on maybe that's a skill issue for me but like what does it say when every fucking anime reactor has dropped this show and like no one's even fucking watching it anymore except just fucking light novel heart elitist i i don't know i feel like it, this is just in a weird position right now Demon Slayer, De Demon Misfit is just in a weird spot. Newgate, absolute trash. Remonster, put it ahead of Newgate. And then, <laughs> these are the shows right here. You guys did this. You did this. You see this? Unnamed Memories. Salad Bowl. Yuri Enemy. I hear the Yuri Enemy, you know, scheduling is garbage right now. Mahoka, Spice and Wolf, Jellyfish. Fuck, it's copyright issues. Sentai, Viral Hit. You killed these enemies. Not me. You killed it. By not watching it, okay? And that, I think, I can say with confidence that this is my final list of what I personally enjoyed of Spring 2024 anime. And again, this is my bias. This is what I enjoy. You mad at this shit? Go make your own tier list. And I'm going to come to the video and say, L opinion. <laughs> then you'll see how exactly annoying you are. See you guys in the next week.